Hi everyone, we are the Nature Gators, and for our project team video, we chose to interview the Daniels Lab within the McGuire Center for Lepidoptera and Biodiversity at the Florida Museum of Natural History. We chose to focus on this lab because it connected to something that we all cared about a lot, being in this agriculture and communications major. The very topic that they study is something that relates to all of the members in our group, which is the preservation of this world, the preservation of the life within it, and using scientific methods, using really well-constructed and defined methods to tackle those issues. So, this team, the Daniels Lab, is focused primarily on endangered butterfly species. Some popular ones you might know, like the monarch butterfly, but there are lesser known ones like the shell swallowtail or the atala. Most notably and most recently, they've been working on a species called the Miami Blue Butterfly. So, we wanted to see how this team worked together and how they communicated together. We primarily wanted to see what their ideals or values were towards their work and towards one another. And finally, we just wanted to hear from them what their experiences working together had been like. For this reason, we asked them a series of interview questions identically all throughout the board, throughout all interviews. As for class concepts that apply to what we learned in the interviews, we saw that the Daniels Lab very clearly shows all of the conditions for team success. They have trust in one another, they have a very defined team identity, and they have collective efficacy. They also share the ideal team climate. They have a shared vision, participative safety, task orientation, and support for innovation. Dr. Janus himself very clearly exemplified that he is a great leader by practicing the five practices of exemplary leaders. He modeled the way, inspired a shared vision, challenged the process, enabled others to act, and encouraged the heart. We could also see in the interviews the conflict modes of each person's personality shining through. We could clearly identify who was competing, accommodating, avoiding, collaborating, and compromising. So, without further ado, let's get to know this wonderful team of researchers and very charismatic and passionate scientists known as the Daniels Lab. I'm Jared Daniels, I'm the director of the McGuire Center for Lepidoptera and Biodiversity at the Florida Museum of Natural History. I'm an insect ecologist and conservation biologist, and I work primarily on at-risk insects, primarily butterflies and native insect pollinators. I'm Dr. Chase Billingsley Kimmel. I am the postdoc in the lab, so I already have my PhD, and I am in the lab to increase my research experience. Here I do help out with other things like butterfly care and whenever we, we, we do help each other a lot in the lab whenever we need help. I've got them helping me make bee nests and I help them whenever if they've got to go out of town or need some help on the weekend where they need me to help with some host plants. But my role is a, a postdoctoral associate here in the lab. My name is Matt Standridge and I am a research assistant in the Daniels Lab at the McGuire Center at the Florida Museum of Natural History. My name is Kristen Rossetti and I'm the Reverse the Decline Coordinator for our lab. That's my official title. I'm really more of a general coordinator. How would you define your leadership style? Uh, I think I'm a pretty casual leader, I guess. I, I, uh, um, I think I try to treat my employees like colleagues as much as possible and try to talk through why we're doing what we're doing and make sure that everybody understands the process, the big goals, and that way people are working towards a unified vision and a unified goal and it makes it more personal to them. Um, and I think you know, regular communication is critical obviously and I try my best to do, to do that through regular meetings with, with students or my lab. Um, but I think we, we understand that broad vision is most important because then we, we're all working towards that ultimate goal. If you don't understand where you're going, it's easy to get lost. Um, lead by example, I imagine. Um, that's, that's kind of how Jarrett uh, does it too, and, and it, it seems to work. Uh, but something that we do tell people when they come into this lab, when we hire somebody new, is if you see something that you think we could be doing better, don't be afraid to say it. Please let us know, because I mean, that's we all bring something to this lab. Um, 
and yeah, we need outside input every once in a while. You can get stuck doing things a certain way, not even realizing that there's a much better way to do it, much more efficient, easier way. So, yeah. <laughs> That's a tough one. I, I don't know. Uh, I feel like we all work as equals and as a team. And if anyone's the leader, it's Dr. Daniels or all of us. I mean, we're pretty good about um, talking about different problems that we're thinking about with the different projects we're working with, bouncing ideas off each other. And I feel it's more of a collaboration than anyone leading, if you know what I mean. Whole, I feel like we've got pretty good dynamics in here. We we like to have fun. We like to uh, joke and, and give each other a hard time. At the same time, when it comes to getting work done, there are certain times whenever we just put in our, our earbuds and we, we got to work. Or there are certain times whenever I come in here and I can work and answer questions. There are other times where I go hide in my office and don't talk to anyone. So um, it's I, I'm not trying to be secluded, but sometimes you've got to get work done and you've got to you know put your head down and go for it. So in terms of team dynamics, we, we get along really well. Um, not really uh, any, any drama and in those times in the last six years whenever we do have drama typically the best thing to do is in my opinion in, in all things in life a, a big key whether it's relationships co-workers um, you know being an advisor is communication right so you got to communicate the problems you got to communicate the good things and celebrate the the accomplishments you also need to communicate when things don't go as well um, so um, i think communication is key and not just in in lab dynamics but in all things in life we like to have a good time, you know, we, we get a lot of work done, but we like to enjoy ourselves doing it. Um, like I said, I feel like we're all on a pretty level playing field, like from the people who've just been hired to the people who've been here for years, you know, if someone thinks about a different way something can be accomplished or a problem with the way things are, we always, you know, want that aired because that's all important information. I think, I think our, the team that I have in my lab, so I'm, I'll start by saying I'm really fortunate that I have really great people, and, and great people make you look really good, so I'm a product of the people that surround me, which is, which is excellent. Um, I think it's a pretty casual lab in general. I think we, again, we know what the common vision is, so we work towards that, and I also try to select people in general that are very independent workers because I don't like micromanaging. I don't think any employees like their boss to micromanage them. So the idea is I can kind of let people move forward on their own. They're really good problem solving if they run across a problem and then they know when to kind of bring it to my attention when it gets to a particular level of a problem. And, and so I think they work really well together. I think they communicate well and I think they, they generally have a lot of passion for what they do, which they work really long, they work hard hours, um, and so that's exactly what you need. What values do you believe that you and your team members share, and how does that show itself through your work? Um, we're all very passionate about what we're doing. We don't do this for the money, um, but again, a good sense of humor absolutely helps uh, while doing all this. You do have to be uh, self-motivated for sure and really want to come to work every day. Uh, a lot of, we work with living creatures so it's an everyday job, you know, <laughs> you have to come in on the holidays, you have to come in on the weekends, so you have to be willing to do that. So it kind of has to come from your heart, if you know what I mean, because it's not the kind of thing you're going to be willing to do if you don't really believe in the importance of why you're doing it. Over the years, the dynamics of the lab can change, but one thing that Jarrett's always done a very good job of is, is bringing people together and keeping, uh, making the lab feel like a place where we can actually come to and have a sense of community to talk to one another, to be there for one another. Um, and so, as a whole, things do change and they've always, uh, it's not that things change for bad or good, it's just you, you focus on the strengths of the individuals involved in the lab at that time. And so sometimes maybe we're more involved with social media. Sometimes we may be involved less based upon the strengths of the person in charge at that time. But we uh, all try to contribute to make sure that our goal to help conserve, to read, to find out more information about all these organisms that we work with um, 
that it's known and available to other people and other researchers.